Hello, and welcome to Life on a Leaf, a brief description of mites that can be found on the surfaces of apple leaves. On the surface of this leaf, you can see a very complicated ecosystem. You can see two adult female two-spotted spider mites crawling around on the surface, as well as two predatory phytoseid mites, the yellow teardrop-shaped mites, more or less at rest. This two-spotted spider mite is feeding on the cellular contents of this leaf, including the chlorophyll. This can reduce the overall health of the tree and in turn reduce the fruit production for that year. As you watch the mite feed, you notice that her spots actually appear to shift. This is because these spots are actually digestive pigmentation within her body. This phytoseed mite may seem very timid at rest and incapable of consuming such large, relatively speaking, spider mites. However, they are active and voracious hunters. Two active female mites can be seen here, potentially searching for prey. The one in the upper portion of the frame is moving her front two legs this allows her to detect odors, just like many insects use antennae. These predatory mites are active hunters and can spend much of their time traversing the leaf surface, looking for other mites to consume. This predator has found a two-spotted spider mite egg. Like many plant feeding mites, they will pierce the outside of their prey and begin removing the liquid contents. Also like the two spotted spider mites shown earlier, they are translucent, so you can see small contractions in her digestive tract as she consumes the contents of this egg, eventually leaving it just an empty shell. A younger mite, likely a deutonymph, or the last nymphal stage of the life cycle of predatory mites, can be seen here feeding on a two-spotted spider mite egg. This egg is very mature, as you can see the two eye spots of the larva developing within. A larger adult female approaches the younger individual with her meal. Although most phytoseids are not cannibalistic unless under starvation conditions, the younger life stages tend to be cautious of larger organisms approaching them. This deutonymph steps out of the way as the adult female is apparently interested in the meal that she had been consuming. The adult female settles and begins to feed. Because this process can take several minutes, the rest of her feeding bout will be shown via time lapse. At this point, most of the solid contents of the egg had been removed leaving a very shriveled remnant. With feeding complete, the female moves on. Although younger life stages tend to be the preferred food of these predators, they will occasionally feed on adult female spider mites. This captivating struggle for survival occurs at a very small scale. All the mites shown here 
are less than half a millimeter in length. Like the predatory mites, spider mites also have distinct life stages. Featured here, we see a female deuteronymph underneath an adult male near a younger female protonymph. The females are shiny because they are going, undergoing ecdysis. They have their air of exoskeleton covering them right before a molt. The males are fully developed and are waiting for the female deuteronymphs to emerge from their exoskeletons in order to mate. Here, a male approaches a female and begins to mount her. The male will spend some time positioning himself on the female. Eventually, he will move to the end of her abdomen, and the tip of his abdomen will start to shift forward. At the end of his abdomen, he has a penis-like structure, which he inserts into the female in order to deposit sperm. Copulation is fast in spider mites and lasts only a few short minutes. In phytoceids, mating can last much longer. First, the male approaches the female and then climbs on her back. He will hold this position for several minutes, the duration of which is species dependent. He will then move to her underside and they will spend a considerable amount of time in this position. The female will walk around on the leaf to find a suitable spot and copulation will begin. Copulation has been observed to range from two to nine hours and is once again species dependent. The position that the mites take during this time can be more clearly seen in this photograph. The male uses specialized hook structures on the end of his chelicera called spermatodactyls to transfer sperm into the female. They can be seen more closely in this photograph. He inserts them into a pore in between the female's last and second to last pair of legs. Inside this pore is a passageway into the spermatheca, a structure for the storage of sperm, which the female will use throughout her lifetime to create eggs. At the end of copulation, the two individuals separate. The female is now capable of producing elliptical, transparent eggs. The next stage in the life cycle of predatory mite is the larva. Unlike the other stages, larva only have six legs. Some species of phytoceid larva consume prey, others not. The next two stages are nymphal, protonymphs and deuteronymphs, with the only apparent difference being size. Phytoceids are not the lone predators existing on this small scale in the orchard. Zetzelia molly, a stigmaid mite, feeds on many of the same species of mites, including European red mite and rust mites. These two predators can work together to control mite outbreaks. However, their reactions can also be antagonistic. Zedzalia molly is known to feed on the younger stages of phytoceid mites. Zedzalia molly are also 
lower consumers of prey than phytoceid mites, making them perhaps less suitable biological control agents. The smallest plant consuming arthropod in orchards are rust mites. These four legged mites are important alternative food items to both species of predators when other types of prey like spider mites are scarce. Fortunately, they rarely do significant amounts of damage to apple trees, so their presence can almost be thought of as helpful rather than harmful. Amazingly, all of this activity is occurring with individuals that are smaller than the end of the tip of a pencil.